Hello, my name is Askar Gafuro, and I'm here to present a talk named Marco Chains Improve the Significance Computation of Overlapping Genome Annotations. This work was done together with Bronya Breva and Paul Medvedev. Let's talk about genome annotations. Many types of genomic features, such as genes, regulatory elements, or epigenetic modifications, are commonly denoted as genomic annotations. We can see the annotation as just a set of intervals in a genome. In order to study them, we often have to compare them. And if we see that two annotations overlap often, that could mean that they are possibly somehow related. For example, if a certain methylation coincides with promoter regions, we can conclude that this particular methylation may play a role in the transcription process. So the task uh, which is before us is to determine whether the number of overlaps is high enough to be significant. That's called colloquialization analysis. This task is often formulated as a statistical test, and statistical tests have three, three key components. The first of them is choice of a statistic. It could be number of overlapping intervals, number of shared bases between two annotations, etc. Second choice, second component, is the choice of the null hypothesis. This is a random process which governs the annotations in case they are unrelated. And the third one is the algorithm for computation of the p-value, where p-value is the probability that the statistic would be as extreme as the observed one under the unrelated uh, hypothesis. And in case that that probability is low, then we will conclude that those annotations are indeed related. There are many options to select those components, and uh, we will talk about a particular one which we'll call gold standard. In gold standard hypothesis, we have two annotations, which we call reference R and query Q, and statistics is the number of intervals in R which overlap with Q. The null hypothesis is that the reference Q annotation is fixed, and the query annotation is chosen uniformly at random among all disjoint rearrangements. So we can uh, change the order of uh, all intervals in Q, and we can change the gaps. We have to, we have to fix uh, uh, the, um, the set of intervals. Uh, that formulation takes into account the structure of intervals in R, and also takes into account the lengths of interval in Q. Uh, so that's why it is a popular choice among scientists. However, uh, the problem is with the computation of the p-value, because the direct enumeration of all rearrangements is not feasible since there is exponentially a big amount of them. So uh, most of the solutions are relying on sampling, where they sample the random annotations and count how many times the sampled statistic is more extreme than the observed one. Uh, so our first result is that Computing p-value under that gold standard with rearrangements is indeed NP-hard, so that explains why there are no uh, efficient solutions for that. And at the same time, uh, this motivates the modification of the gold standard in order to achieve a feasible algorithm. So one of the pro attempts was conducted by Sarmashki and Bafna in 2019, where they modified the null hypothesis by restraining the order of intervals, so we are no longer able to switch the order of intervals, but we are only allowed to, to uh, play with the gaps. And having that, they were able to uh, describe an exact dynamic programming algorithm in all M and L time, where M and N are the sizes of query and reference, and the L is the genome size. And since it's too slow, they also came up with a heuristic where they scale all the coordinates, I multiply by a small constant and then round it down, uh, and that achieves a linear speed up in the time. And we are here to present you a new approach, which we'll call MCDP, and uh, our null hypothesis would be based on the Markov chains. In the next slides, I will show you the way to formulate that hypothesis and uh, in which, which way which allow us to um, achieve algorithm to compute the p-value in O m squared plus n time with uh, the main advantage is that it is independent of the genome size, so it could be run on any genome sizes. So let's get to the formulation of the hypothesis. So in our Marco chain null hypothesis, the reference is fixed as before, and query annotation is generated by Marco chain. So this is the Marco chain that has two states, 0 and 1. 0 represents outside of the interval, 1 represents inside the interval. And then uh, we just generate L states, 
and contiguous uh, segments of ones represents the individual intervals, as you can see in the example. And uh, we set the weights in such manner that the probability of generating the original query Q is maximized. So our task is to, for a given reference R, uh, reference annotation R and Marco chain with set transition probabilities to compute the probability that the number of overlaps would be at least as extreme as some observed statistics. And the solution is to compute the probability of having exactly key overlaps for each is the key between zero and M using dynamic programming. So let's talk about that dynamic programming approach. So uh, let's uh, denote the intervals in R as B1, E1, uh, B2, E2, etc., up to BM, EM. And now we define our dynamic programming table uh, P uh, with parameters J, Kappa, S as the probability of hitting exactly Kappa reference intervals after generating a j states of the Markov chain. So we end just after the jth interval with that, that our last state is S. And so this is as our dynamic programming table. Uh, now we have to define the records for that programming, uh, for the dynamic programming table. And it goes as follows. The, the idea is, uh, is that if we want to hit exactly kappa out of j intervals, we have to either hit kappa out of j minus one intervals and don't hit the jth interval or hit kappa minus one out of j minus one and then we have to hit the jth interval. If we would put that formally, it will give that the following recurrence. And the main observation here is that if we are able to compute the probability of hitting or not hitting the jth interval in constant time, then our dynamic programming could be solved in OM squared time and OM space. So let's talk about probability of not hitting j interval. So probability of not hitting with uh, for j, x, and y means that we are interested in the probability of starting at state x, generate inter generate states up until the end of j interval, finish at state y, and not hit the j interval. So uh, any path which will be generated, any sequence of states will be generated, can have anything in the gap between the intervals, so there could be anything, but uh, as we don't want to hit that interval, here should be only zeros. And if we define uh, psi any as probability of getting from state, from one state to another state, uh, while generating whatever we want, and psi zeros as probability of getting from one state to another in a certain amount of steps, but generating only zeros, then we are able to write down our probability of not hitting the interval as a product of those two values. So our task now is to compute those psi any, those probabilities of generating exactly t states starting from x going to y uh, in constant time. And uh, using the property of Markov chains, it can be seen that probability of generating anything going from state x to state y in a steps can be computed just as a, an, exp an exponentiation of the transition probability matrix of that Markov chain. And the same goes for psi zeros. And now we only have to exponentiate the matrices and then the rest is done. And here is the key observation that we can compute the an arbitrary uh, exponent of those matrices using diagonalization in constant time. And this concludes the algorithm. We are able to compute everything in constant time, so the dynamic programming table can be computed in square time. So let's go to the experiments. Uh, first, uh, we have taken the human genome, genome datasets from the original sarmashkin Bafna paper. Uh, and uh, we can see, you can see that uh, we take only a couple of minutes to compute the p-values while they take uh, tens or even hundreds or thousands of minutes. And at the same time, we take almost no memory and where does they have to use up to several gigabytes of memory. So we are not only theoretically, but also practically faster and uh, more memory efficient than they are. And if we took, if we look at the precision at these uh, slides, you can see the, uh, those probabilities of having exactly K overlaps where yellow line is the sampled gold standard and the black lines are our probability distribution. And you can see that our line, like our results, follows the gold standard more closely than the SBDP. 
especially here. So, in, in, in conclusion, we are both faster and more precise than the SBDP algorithm. We also wanted, we also replicated the uh, experiments made by Zarai et al. in 2015, where they have studied uh, exons of several gene groups against uh, CNV losses. And uh, in this image, you can see that uh, blue dots are our reported p-values and uh, green rectangles are their p-value ranges from the original paper. And you can see that we are mostly in agreement. So there are a couple of discrepancies and we have studied those discrepancies in, the, in our paper. And one thing that I want to point out from that, besides the fact that we are mostly in agreement, is that uh, those data set, all genes, contains all the human exons, which are more than 200,000 of them in the RefSeq, and also 23,000 of uh, loss regions. So our method is applicable to large data sets, such as um, all human exons. So in conclusion, our results is that we have proven that the gold standard is NP-hard. We have then altered the gold standard to come up with uh, an Marco Chinal hypothesis, and we have shown that our proposed algorithm to compute p-value has complexity independent from the genome size. Uh, we have shown that MCDP is close to the original gold standard, even though it, it is an alteration. And we have shown that we can run our algorithm on human scale data and large data, human scale data sets. In the future, we want to make it even faster by approximating the p-values instead of an exact com computation. Uh, we also want to model the length distributions uh, using phase type distributions. And we want to investigate the probability or possibility of using other statistics, for example, number of shared bases. So that's all for me. From me, thank you for your attention.